I call Dennis O'Rourke. Mr Speaker, Chester Burroughs said that National had started the year with a hiss and a roar, but of course it was really only because that was the air coming out of the government's tyres. But the, but the government, but the Prime Minister, is still proud to say that they have a proud record in government. However, most Kiwis don't agree, especially those people looking for a good job or an affordable home or people trying to run a small business. And the government's lax immigration policy is one particular area they should be ashamed of. It drives up the cost of housing, especially in Auckland. It drives down wages by allowing the importation of cheap foreign labour. It places strains on superannuation, health and other social services by allowing too much unskilled labour into the country. And what all this shows is that this government is really only interested in the interests of big business and isn't interested in the needs of ordinary Kiwis at all. Mr Speaker, there are several areas of disgraceful performance by a weak government with slack immigration and ineffective housing policies. And the Auckland residential property prices are clear evidence of that. There's no doubt that foreign investors are using Auckland as a land bank. They have access to plenty of cash from foreign banks. They pay very low interest rates, as low as half a percent in China and elsewhere. And they have no concerns about increasing interest rates, which we in New Zealand are about to see. They can pay cash and they can easily outbid Kiwis seeking a home. There are no restrictions here on foreign buyers buying homes, land banking them, letting them at high rents and then reselling at a profit. So of course they buy as many as they can. New Zealand First will put a stop to it and not allow foreign uh, people to buy land in this country at all. This government doesn't care and does nothing. And in the meantime, what we see is offshore real estate agents busy advertising and selling Auckland property. And overseas property publications recommending overseas investors to buy in New Zealand because they know they can make a killing here at the expense of young Kiwis in particular who are seeking a first home. So we're getting absentee overseas landlords being created, seeking the highest rents possible. And they are one important cause of the Auckland housing bubble. But this government is in denial about this problem and does absolutely nothing about it. And another thing, Mr Speaker, is that parent reunion immigration is another problem that this government has been particularly slack about. Firstly, there is already a backlog as at June 2013 of 7,000 applicants for entry under the parent uh, reunion category. And 5,500 of these are Chinese. All these numbers are growing and growing fast, hence the backlog. It's now getting really out of hand and the government is sitting on its hands about it despite all of the caterwauling of those members opposite. People in New Zealand are concerned and they are concerned because what it means is that the average of all immigrants is now too high at 29 years and getting older. And the, pop and the proportion of unskilled immigrants is too high too. New Zealand does need the skills of skilled immigrants where there is a genuine shortage of those skills. But this government's immigration policies are poorly targeted and Chinese immigrants are favoured and at the expense of other nationalities, which is unfair. The average age of Chinese immigrants is 40 years and that is much too old. The reason for this is the legacy of China's one-child policy, which means that a much higher proportion of Chinese have only one child. 
And these days, a very large number of Chinese are wealthy enough to educate that child overseas, and New Zealand is, of course, a popular place to go for that purpose. So the child easily gets a student visa and then applies for residence, and then the parents apply for residence under the parent reunion category so that they can be with their only child. They have no problem with the requirement to have either $500,000 capital, with which, of course, they would buy a home in Auckland, or at least $40,000 of annual income. But parents from other countries are usually not that lucky. So the practical effect is that Chinese are favoured and the average age of Chinese immigrants, as I've said, is far too high. These people can get New Zealand superannuation only 10 years after only 10 years residence and without ever having had to work here or pay tax in this country. And they get the benefit of our health system, ACC, and other benefits. New Zealand is a retirement paradise for elderly Chinese, and they know it, as the 5,500 backlogged applicants testify. But this witless government does nothing about it. This is not a small issue. There are 20,000 applicants per year from all countries in this category. Expert commentators have said that the ratio between skilled and unskilled immigrants in New Zealand is far too heavily weighted in favour of unskilled immigrants, and we agree. The reasons I've given show why that is. New Zealand First would restructure immigration policy to achieve a ratio of 25% unskilled and 75% skilled immigrants, and that's the way it should be. That would be fair to all applicants. But most of all, Mr Speaker, it would be fair to New Zealanders, especially those looking for a job here or seeking their first home. And at 6.2% of unemployment, according to the Household Labour Force survey, this is a pretty significant issue. Our policy would also reduce the potential for a blowout in costs for New Zealand superannuation and other social services which older immigrants would seek. Mr Speaker, another important issue uh, for immigration is work visas. 158,542 work visas were issued in 2013. At the same time, there are 150,000 Kiwis out of work. And uh, as I've said, that is 6.2% of the whole workforce, which is too high. Kiwis should be at the front of the job queue and not competing with foreigners. The essential skills list is not properly reassessed. Employers are supposed to only seek foreign labour if they can't get a Kiwi to do the job, but that's not well policed, so cheap foreign labour comes in taking Kiwi jobs. Mr Speaker, another area is international student visas, which needs to be changed. 70,000 of these were in New Zealand in 2013. It is good to bring in overseas students for education, but they should not have automatic work visas, because that is potentially another 70,000 jobs taken from Kiwis. And New Zealand First says that also has to stop. Mr Speaker, the truth about this government's immigration policies is that they are a mess. Immigration plays a large part in the health of the New Zealand economy, and this government should be ashamed of and not proud of the chaotic state of immigration policy in New Zealand and of the damage it is doing right now. It's high time for change. But this government clearly doesn't know what to do about it. New Zealand First does and will when we get the chance to do so later this year. Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Mr Speaker, you know it's election year, don't you? I think we could set our watch.